Welcome to Hard Talk. I'm Stephen Sacker. Imran Khan won power in Pakistan two years ago with a promise to root out corruption and take on the country's vested interests. So how's it going? Well, rising food prices and the COVID pandemic have left many Pakistanis feeling worse off, while the anti-corruption drive has become a political battleground. My guest today, Ishak Dar, was Pakistan's finance minister, a key lieutenant of former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. Now, both of those men are trying to rally opposition to Imran Khan. But how much credibility do they have? Ishak Dar, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you for inviting me. Let us begin with your personal status, your legal status. Sure. You are a wanted man in Pakistan. Are you here in London to escape the judicial process? Well, not, not really. I think uh, you must be aware of the Pakistan history, that whenever in Pakistan over a period of 73 years, the corruption rhetoric has been used in the last uh, few dictatorships. And the current one isn't different because this regime is known to be under a covert coup or a judicial martial law. So I, I can prove uh, that there is nothing against me and I have all the evidence. Uh, I hope that you know that the prime allegation against me, my name was not in Panama paper. My name was not in uh, the 20th of April. Let, let, let me stop you, because some people will not be following this uh, in, in great detail. Sure. You're saying <clears throat> your name was not in the Panama Papers. Nonetheless, sure. we learned an awful lot from those Panama Papers published in 2016 about sure. money is being stashed away in foreign bank accounts, and it involves some very top-level Pakistanis. And there was reason to believe that not just Nawaz Sharif's family was involved, but your family too. No. There, there isn't any mention of my family well, at I'm all. not saying there was a specific mention of your family, but the <laughs> but National they, Accountability Bureau decided after the publication of the Panama Papers to look very closely at yours and your family's interests, assets and accounts. Most welcome. And they found that there were grave uh, problems with no, your not, accounts. No, not at all. Not at all. Because you see, I'm sure that uh, you would be privy that it was the Supreme Court direction which set up a joint investigation team, which is extrajudicial uh, activity which uh, Supreme Court decided. And there were two military intelligence members who were virtually governing out of the six members of the JIT. So you see, there's a background. Well, I, I, I'm actually interested in, in what's known in Pakistan as the National Accountability Bureau, yeah, which, which is, is the main agency of anti-corruption. Yeah, and it, they looked very carefully at you and your family's interests, as you well know. And in September 2017, they concluded that you and your family owned assets, quote, beyond your known sources of income. They said quite specifically, <clears> the <throat> accused, that is you, has acquired assets and pecuniary, pecuniary interests, resources in his own name and the name of dependents are totaling uh, roughly six million US dollars, more than 830 million Pakistani rupees. Now, is it your contention that the National Accountability Bureau has no integrity? It has lost its integrity a long time back. It is, uh, it is uh, a, you know, an institution which is used uh, against political opponents. But you didn't say that with respect, sir, when you were a, a very senior serving government minister. No, no I did. I, had, I held press conference and I explained, by the way, this number is as per my tax return. I never missed. You see the prime allegation against me, which was, which was in, in the JIT report on the basis of which Supreme Court directed NAB to file a reference was that I did not file 20 years tax return in Pakistan, 1981 to 2001. A UK qualified chartered accountant never missed uh, reporting his tax matters in UK when he was here uh, till 1976. And then in the North America, 
two years and in Pakistan since 70 and never missed any tax return. So this is such a, a you know, blatant allegation. Is it? Well, in that case, let, let's be very open and transparent yeah. with each other. I've interviewed many government officials and ministers around the world over many years and sure. they always say, oh, I'm not responsible for any corruption at all and I believe in transparency. I do. You do. Oh, so yes, how of many course. properties do you and your family own? It's all declared in my in, in my uh, in my tax returns. Well, well, you see, just this, give me the answer because I don't uh, know I, how many properties do you I, and your family I have, own. I have uh, my main residence uh, in Pakistan, which has been taken over by uh, you know by this uh, regime. Uh, so I have I haven't got too many properties. But how every, many properties do you and your family uh, my, own? My net worth is the what what has no, been no, reported. How many properties do you and your family own? One. One, my one sole property. You and your family own yes, one property. My sole residence. So all of these stories in the Pakistani press about multiple properties owned by your family mm. inside Pakistan, property <clears> interests <throat> overseas, including in Dubai, More. wherever, and we're but, sitting uh, in London. But, uh, what, we're what, sitting what, in London. You not own nothing in London. No, no. your family, not the, just you, your family. No, not at all. Own nothing. No, because the, and you Dubai, see, the, the government. Dubai. No, my my sons have just one villa, which is which is owned by them. They're in business for the last seventeen years. So when I asked you how many properties you and your family owned and you said one that wasn't that strictly is, true no the, the, no it is strictly true because they're adult they're married they're 17 years they're in business so they're independent of me you you know and very they, they, well and, that when the nab looked at your assets they were looking at you and your family i have no issue i have no issue my family everything is accounted for that's exactly you see, see. If, if all of this is so clear-cut you only own one property in the entire world your tax records have been kept and given to the authorities over the yeah. last yeah. 20 years if everything this... is so crystal clear yeah. why do you not go to pakistan and make this case in a court of law well the court of law you know we you know my lawyers were there i i'm here for medical treatment a cervical issue do, do You've we, been here for what best yeah, part of three years on yeah, this medical issue. Almost yes, I am. Are, are you still really suffering? Yes, I am. I, I'm, I'm, and, and you couldn't possibly get back to Pakistan. Well, let's see what's what's happening in Pakistan. What where are the human rights? What's happening in NAP custody? Where people have, have dozens of people have, have been killed virtually. But sorry, you, you're you, saying there's that a people human being investigated by the NAB, the National Accountability Bureau, have been killed. In the NAB custody, many people have died. Yes, uh, I mean it's an open secret. You just you Google and you would you would have all the detail. I can I can leave detail with you if you want to. You see this 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 institution has been politically used against opponents. As I said, that I never missed a return. My the, the premise of the entire thing and whatever they say, my net worth is already if it is documented in my tax return mm. and my tax return is not missing. Mm. So it is totally accounted for. So what is the issue? The issue is issue is something different because Mr. Sharif was fighting for the civil supremacy. And I have always been fighting for the for the financial and fiscal discipline and transparency. Right. So you, well, you, you, you introduced the name Mr. Sharif. So I think we need to talk about Mr. Sharif as well as yourself, because Nawaz Sharif is also in London, also on medical grounds. He unlike, man, man, manhandled by the NAB well, in his custody. Manhandled, you say. Yeah. The truth is Nawaz Sharif is a convicted criminal. Well, uh, I hope you know that both cases in which he has been convicted both case in both uh, judgments it has been written that the prosecution has not been able to prove any corruption what? any kickback any uh, loss to the exchequer so what else we want I, I i i'm sorry sir but it is quite clear that he is a convicted criminal and again the accountability court which works alongside the national accountability bureau found against mr sharif i believe he was given a 10-year sentence and that was reduced ultimately to seven years he was then allowed to come to london on medical grounds the same medical grounds that you brought you to london too so here there's two of you <laughs> sit and now you and he, you of course used to be his finance minister sure. in the Pakistan government, you and he put yourselves forward as leading voices in the opposition in Pakistan demanding early elections and an end to Imran Khan's government. And I ask you, what credibility do you think you have with the Pakistani people? I think people? what credibility Imran Khan government has. The world has witnessed that it was a stolen election. It was a rigged election. It's not we we are saying. We have experienced all uh, pre-poll -po 2018 surveys indicate the PMLN will win. But uh, the observers, the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan, the dirtiest election 
everybody knows the election has been uh, stolen uh, from us. So uh, I think well, we have with every respect, right. I just look back at the yeah. EU monitors report on yeah. that election. Yeah. They reported some grave concerns about abuses in specific places, sure. not involving just one party, but sure. several different sure. parties. Sure. But the final and ultimate conclusion was that they believed the result was credible that Imran Khan's election victory in 2018 was credible. That was the conclusion of but the you EU report. Then you haven't read the, all the reports. The human rights, uh, you know, well, you, you, can cherry Pakistan, pick, you can cherry pick the most negative. It, I'm telling you that the EU monitors, the, highly it, respected, it, independent it, monitors, looked the, at everything what, that what happened about, in Pakistan, the, the, and they concluded that Imran Khan's victory was credible. No, free and fair election network, uh, which is the global one, do, I mean, do we have any question integrity on their integrity? What do they report? I don't they, believe that there's ever been an election in Pakistan without some abuses where every single this, thing was conducted with freedom and integrity. The, that doesn't work in Pakistan. The, the, the you, truth is Imran Khan has a democratic mandate. He's been Mr. in power for two years and you are now Mr. saying to the Pakistani Mr. people he must be removed from Mr. office. Mr. Sir, he this election has been stolen. It was a rigged election. There was a pre-poll rigging. Electables from our party were, you know, were pushed to his party uh, using the NAB. During the day, the the you know the uh, uh, the results transmission system was was choked off and was was put off of hours. Our polling agents were ex expelled from the poll. I mean. Fafin has reported 35 seats were rigged and stolen. Otherwise, he would have never been uh, in government. Well, your party chooses <laughs> to say that. I would simply well, come back to Michael report. Gala, the <laughs> chief of the UN monitor, the EU monitoring uh, team, who said overall, uh, I think you have this read election the whole result is credible. Well, well this is this. You haven't read the whole report. I can uh, let's go to the whole report of uh, sure. of uh, EU chief. Let's, Please go through what what did he say before this uh, last sentence. Yeah, well, of course, <laughs> yes. his conclusion is the most important thing. I think you'd agree. No, no. Well, oh, conclusion. maybe you wouldn't. Okay, yeah. let's move on. Let's talk about what your tactics are now, because as I've said, you and Nawaz Sharif are sending your video links back into Pakistan, sure. sometimes to thousands of people, hmm. demanding an early end to the Imran Khan government. And this is what just a month ago Nawaz Sharif said to thousands of people in Punjab. He said that the integrity of the army chief, General Kamar Javed Bajwa, had disappeared. He said that the general was responsible for levering him out of office and rigging 2018, as you've said. Quote, the, this is what uh, Nawaz Sharif said, you uh, directly to the general, the chief of the army, he said, you packed up our government and you, you uh, put the nation at the altar of your own wishes. You rejected the people's choice in elections and installed an inefficient, incapable group leading to economic catastrophe. What an extraordinary thing to say of oh, a, your country's chief of army. It's a reality. The, the buck st stops at the top. And the deep state is known uh, what deep state does in Pakistan. I mean, is, is, is it a surprise to you, Mr. Seker? It is known to the world. Is the Hillary Clinton other day just gave an interview. And she said, what, what is deep state? Quoting Pakistan is an example. So please, we must, we must be fair to analyze things. The election was stolen. It started off from down, down leaks. Mr. Sharif has been struggling for the supremacy of democracy, for the supremacy of parliament, and I have been struggling for the fiscal and and, and fiscal and uh, discipline and the transparency. Is it wrong? I mean, UK has been upholding the democracy and the democratic values. We would think that you would be supporting us. So let us be clear. You yeah. are saying that the Pakistani military, the army in particular, are subverting all demo democratic processes in your country. Is that what well, you're this, is, this is the global report. I mean, it's not... We... No, no, I want to be clear what you're saying. Well, but I, I, because I, the Pakistani people I, will be listening to this interview and you are uh, condemning the military of your own country man, as I, subverting your it's democracy. Not, it's not the military. I think we have, to, we have to talk about the individuals. It's not all the entire institution. I think let's, be, let's create a difference. It's the, it's the, it's the wish list, is the plan of certain people who, who, who enforce in Pakistan so, martial law. So you're it's saying not, the army is led by General Bajwa, who in yours uh, and Nawaz Sharif's opinion is entirely subverting democracy. Is that what you're saying? Well, I, I think I want that, to be clear. Uh, let, let's re-articulate. What, what we are saying that if the elections were rigged, it is now established uh, without any ray of doubt. So if the election were rigged and, uh, uh, you know, somebody has been planned, it's not we, it is the Interior Minister of Pakistan gave a statement that if Mr. Sharif had not got problem with the deep state 
and the institutions, he would have been fourth time prime minister. Why did? Why would he say it? So no, it let me be clear. You're now alleging that this is entirely unacceptable when your erstwhile boss and your very close ally, no, yeah. ally Nawaz Sharif, was working hand in glove with Pakistan's military dictator General Zia for many years. And suddenly he's decided that the military and the way they interfere in politics in Pakistan is entirely unacceptable. What kind of hypocrisy is that? No, I, 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 dis, I disbelieve uh, uh, you know, this analysis. Frankly speaking, I disagree with you. Well, well what uh, bit but, of what I've just said is wrong? Maybe evolution process. Maybe evolution process. Evolution process. Yeah, because you know. He, oh, you mean because then he was in power and now he's out of power, so he's really it, angry it, with the army because well, they well, won't work with him. No, it's, it's not. It's not the. It's not, it's not the first time. It's the third time he was prime minister. And Imran Khan, own interior minister, tells the whole world that Mr. Sharif would have been fourth time prime minister if he had not uh, got trouble with the uh, with the uh, you know the establishment. You see, Imran Khan <laughs> may be unpopular in Pakistan now, but when he heard what Nawaz Sharif said last month at that rally, when he directly targeted the chief of army, Imran Khan said this. He said, how dare Sh Nawaz Sharif point to uh, the general and blame him for what is happening in Pakistan when for years Mr. Nawaz Sharif polished the boots of a former military dictator. When Imran Khan said that, I dare say he actually had a great deal of sympathy from many Pakistanis who know hypocrisy when they see it. Uh, I, I think you probably haven't seen his 21 clips, how he has been maligning the military, the military army chief, the intelligence services of Pakistan, and not too long before, it's, it's just uh, last year when he was in the United States, he gave a statement that it is the ISI, the you know the our intelligence service, uh, which actually was responsible for the Osama bin Laden, and it's uh, it's killing it, etc. etc. So I think when he was out of power, when he was in opposition, he had uh, given 21 different statements at different times. He was known as Taliban Khan. I mean, I, I don't know. What, are we talking or wish to discuss his performance and our performance? Are we here to talk whether it is a pure democracy or is it an anocracy? You and other opposition elements have created this Pakistan democratic movement. You want to deliver early elections and see Imran booted out of power. But many people, even in your own movement, are now backing away from this targeting of the Pakistani military. For example, Bilawal Bhutto said it was regrettable that Nawaz Sharif had named the military chief by name. And even Mr. Sharif's own daughter, Mariam, had to stress at great length that she was not anti-military. It sounds like Nawaz they, they, Sharif has overstepped you see, the mark. They, I think there's, there seems to be a confusion. Mr. Nawaz Sharif, as prime minister or otherwise, is not anti-military. Please, let's be very clear. He blames certain individuals. And as I said, the puck, you know, stops at the, at the top. If the dawn leaks were there. There's a huge, uh, you know, history on, uh, about that. I'm, I'm sure you will be privy to, to dawn leaks. It's, it relates to Fatif. It relates to Pakistan going back to grey, which we brought out from grey and it was white. So I think, you know, if Mr. Sharif talks of certain interventions which are against the oath, against the constitution of Pakistan, is it, is something wrong? I think let's talk. Let's talk about <laughs> politics and your message to your own people. We know that Pakistani people are suffering right now. Food the price inflation is soaring. COVID-19 is seeing a second surge in your country, sure. creating real economic difficulties. There's going to be barely any growth in the Pakistan economy this year. In the midst of all of that, you are creating a new level of political instability, demanding that Imran call early elections, calling him illegitimate, banging on about the vote rigging, claiming that the army is really in power. Do you think that your approach is really helping the interests of the Pakistani people? I think you have to be neutral umpire, Mr. Sekhar, for a moment. 2014, we, we won the election 2013, massive majority, two thirds almost. 2014, when Mr. Imran Khan comes uh, to agitate for four constituencies rigged only, his claim, nobody spoke. Yeah, and he was, Mr. Dar, you, you, yeah, you're I'm, going I, back I, I, now, no, you're no, going no, back six going, years, I, okay, and I'm, I'm putting myself in okay, the shoes of a Pakistani okay, today okay, who sees I, rising okay, food let, prices, let, okay, political let, instability, let, geopolitical instability, good and enough. he wonders okay, whether come, the opposition okay, sitting okay, in London, fair, yourself fair and Mr. Enough, Nawaz Sharif, really have the interests of ordinary Pakistani uh, better, people at heart. We, yeah, we have interests of Pakistani people at heart, and that's why we are moving. This country had witnessed 
double revenue collection in over 10 or 5 years, lowest inflation, lowest uh, interest rates, best performing stock market in the South Asia, most stable currency, uh, highest G GDP growth in 11 years, 5.8 percent. I mean, it's all, it's all music. Your Western, uh, you know, the institutions had all the praise. And what was the final uh, report in 2016? Price Waters Cooper, what did it say? Pakistan is going to join G20 by 2030. Mm. And we were striving to bring it even earlier. And we were very clearly hoping that since we had ended the load shedding, we had uh, fought the extremism and terrorism in, in Pakistan, we had improved the macroeconomic, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, indicators in Pakistan, and all praises of all. So now, you I, know, I, no, I, I no, understand. No, I'm not, I'm no, not no, suggesting no, that your no, personal no, no, economic no, record was bad. In some ways, no, it was no, good. No, no, but listen, I'm just no, trying no, to get uh, you to respond no, to a simple no, I'm question. Going to... Pakistan is where it is today. No, I, it, but, hang on. Okay. Imran Khan has a five year mandate he won the election he now you not. have a choice I you have a choice not. you can uh, you can wait to fight no, the next no, election no, if no, you choose to go home frankly but at the moment you're still in london you can either fight at the ballot box during the next election or you can try to undermine imran khan and his government from the sidelines from here in london and thereby create new economic and political instability is that the choice you uh, no, no it's not a matter of political instability it's a matter of incompetence is a matter of uh, non-performance it is a matter of uh, ruining and uh, you know grounding the economy of pakistan in two years before corona mind you after 1952 pakistan first time had seen negative gdp growth after 1952 from 5.8 percent first year 1.9 percent this year 0.4 percent negative and there's a massive unemployment we pulled six percent people out of poverty he has pushed back six six you know six six percent people in the poverty line he he promised to give 10 million jobs he has made people unemployed 12 million added to the unemployment numbers i pakistan's think pakistan's in big trouble i just wonder no, whether your approach is weakening pakistan no, on the world no, stage a, you recently uh, tweeted, hang on hang on you recently <laughs> tweeted a message yeah. saying that imran khan and i'm going to quote your Will words you please, please. personified fascism now imran khan yeah. Imran Khan has stood up for Pakistan's interests in a very tough stand against India and Mr. Modi, which you well really? know. He really? has also <laughs> conducted uh, a foreign policy which sees deepening economic ties with China, which is precisely the same policy that you followed. He also is trying to use Pakistan's influence, it seems, to bring the Taliban to the peace table in Afghanistan. What is it about these policies that you think personifies fascism? Well, I, I think that uh, perhaps uh, you haven't studied or you haven't uh, uh, had the time to look into what uh, f fascism he's doing. Each, you, st you stand by that? Yeah, of you? course I do. I do. There is a fascist government in Pakistan as of now. You're trying to mobilize tens of thousands of people on the streets in different Pakistani cities, even when there's a COVID pandemic. Your message is that we must bring Imran Khan's government down by the middle of the year and have new elections. You haven't succeeded so far. What's your next move? Well, Mr. Sekhar, I think you haven't seen Mr. Imran Khan during the same... You see, the PDM uh, gatherings started from 16th of October. You haven't yeah, seen... Yeah, the democratic movement yeah, gatherings, yeah, yes. Yeah. But you haven't seen in the same period, in the last six weeks, you haven't seen the the gatherings, the large gatherings of Mr. Imran Khan himself. The what, COVID, COVID what would not spread. What is your next move? Well, we, uh, our ultimate aim and our ultimate goal is supremacy of, uh, uh, you know, uh, democracy in Pakistan, the free and fair election, which would be transparent and should be acceptable to the world observers. And presumably as, the rule of law. As a rule of law. So will you go home to face the uh, yeah, rule of law? Of course I will. Rule of law and, and, and transparency. And, you know, the, the, the constitution has to be, all institution has to work within the domain uh, which has been prescribed in the constitution of Islamic Republic of Pakistan. I think we'll be very happy. So right now, when, when, I, when I tweeted, I have no regret and it is the ground reality. I mean, I can give you, you know, a, a prime minister who, who, calls, who calls the director general of the federal investigation agency and gives him names and says, go and, 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 and arrest them. I mean, what sort of, uh, you know, governance this is? Well, we, we, we have to end it there. But I do thank you very much indeed for coming into the Hard Talk studio. It's a pleasure. Shagdar, thanks very much. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Many thanks.